Yeah, yeah. Lord, we just um, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the people that are here and and even those that I know that were la here last week that haven't joined us. But um, Lord, we know that um, the gift, the seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit um, needs to be understood in its in its fullness. And I just thank you for Tim. I pray that you just give him wisdom and discernment and uh, and that that guide, which is the Holy Spirit, the guide unto all truth. So we ask ask you to bless this time. And um, and let this truth sink right in, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. You know, a, a lot of our mentoring, teaching, training, discipleship, whatever you want to call it, because of the way the church is, going to church once a week, we get these little nuggets of truth. Whereas if you follow the book of Acts or the New Testament, You'll see like the apostles, like Paul, would stay there for like six months or a year and disciple the people. So <clears throat> he had never visited Rome. So that's why we have the book of Romans, because he never taught in that depth. So that's why uh, I really believe in teaching Romans and help people understand justification, sanctification, imputation, because those are what God has done for us. He's imputed his holiness. He declared us holy. And then he ends his teaching with chapter 8 about the Holy Spirit. And we we forget things or never been taught things like um, uh, Romans 8, he'll quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwells within you. Well, what does that mean? He will quicken the mortal body. What? What can he do for the mortal body? Well, he does all kinds of great things. When you go through the Old Testament and just look what happened when the Holy Spirit came upon certain people. Think of Samson. What happened to him? His supernatural body was became supernatural. Elijah and Elisha, things they did. King David, Old Testament. I mean, you look at Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, Solomon. I mean, the Holy Spirit came upon all these people in the Old Testament, anointed them for works of service. So, and then you go in the New Testament, and you have the Apostle Paul, you have Peter, you have John. I mean, you know, roasted in oil. He didn't die. They put him on the island of Patmos to live out his remaining years. So when we think about he, the Holy Spirit, what does he really do in us? <clears throat> And because of our lack of teaching and our lack of experimenting with him in us, we don't do the exploits we should. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. I was wondering why. I was wondering why we were so pathetic on that front, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, I when, I when I was pastoring, we had a thing called LAB, L-A-B. And after every service... We would do lab. We would have people who were sick, people who, and we would lay hands on them. We'd anoint them with oil. We would step out of our comfort zone and just see what God would do. I mean, we'd pray for cancer, we'd pray for, I mean, you name it, we'd pray for anything and everything. And then people who were lukewarm, we'd pray that they'd receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because. When he filled people, that means they have power for service. And they get off their lazy butts and go do something, so to speak. Mm. Mm. So when it comes to the study of the Holy Spirit, we really don't spend much time on that. Okay, so <clears throat> since we talked about that last week, we talked about who he was, what he did, but we're going we're gonna to veer off. A little bit. And we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. So often we spend uh, time in the gifts of the Spirit. People study the gifts really hard. Like, I'm a pastor. Well, I have a gift of evangelism. I have the gift of prophecy. I have the gift of love. So we talk about all of the gifts. And that is, that is good. I mean, people should know how they should operate in the body of Christ. Right? But we spend a lot more time on just what pastors do or what the teachers do. We don't spend time on the other aspects of what uh, the gifts are. 
But Paul talked about, even though I have all these great gifts, if I don't have the fruit or love, I'm a, I'm a noisy symbol. And I'm a big giant gong that hurts people's ears, <laughs> is what it meant. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the fruit of the Spirit tonight. <clears throat> And just kind of hit that really hard. So we're just going to hit the nine uh, parts in Scripture to talk about what the fruits are in the in the Scripture. We're going to talk about the first one, love, and that's found in Galatians five twenty two. So I'm going to throw scriptures out, and we're going to hit a lot of scriptures real quick. So Galatians 5.22, if anybody's got it. 5.22, I've got that one. Now I'm just getting my glasses on so I can see. 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. <clears throat> is that it? Yep. Okay. So there's no law against the fruit. I mean, there's no way to earn your salvation. There's nothing that you can or we can do to earn God's love. There's not acts you can do. But the fruit of the Spirit shows that you are keeping in step with the Spirit, or the Spirit has been working in us because we have fruit coming out of us. You can look at a person's fruit, love, joy, peace, pain, kindness, gentleness. You can see that the person is walking with God. It's evident. It's evident. So, so we know that love is the key. So the question is, what does love look like? So let me throw this out to you. Then this is, everybody do just a little bit of feedback. What does love look like in practice or action? Love has boundaries. Okay, boundaries. <laughs> the patience. Mm. And you can even yeah. quote scriptures to me if you want. Yeah, well it's it's that long suffering, eh? It's um it's it's love is selfless, eh? It's not about you, true love, isn't it? Yep, yep. Mm. What what does love look like though in practice? Oh, it can <clears throat> I know that I know that for myself that if somebody wants to hurt the ones I love, that that upsets me. The love turns into something um, <laughs> that yeah, well, it's protective. It is yeah, protective. So that you you'd want to fight for those things that you love. So sometimes love's like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, Jesus said, "No greater love has a man than he lay down his life." Yep. For his friends. Mm. Yep. So. When, I mean, that encompasses a whole lot of stuff, you know. So when you think about love, you're thinking about laying your life down, thinking about cold of cup of water to the poor, um, preaching the gospel to people. I mean, love is going after sinners and trying to help them understand what, what and who God is. What, what about the soldiers in Ukraine fighting for their country? Is that love? Uh, it could be for some. For some, it could be love of country. You know, maybe it could also be, you know, love of just uh, the familiar. You know, I'm in America, and I think I look at all of the, the yuck that's taking place, and I think we could use a little bit of warfare or fire just to burn up the chaff to make people think again. Mm. You know, I mean, our major cities are are – they're big dumps. L.A., Seattle, Chicago. Um, they're just full of drugs. I mean, you go down to Los Angeles and all you see is block after block after block of people laying in the street shooting up drugs. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And and the churches, uh, about 15 years ago, I did a study on churches. And for every mega church that got to a thousand, seven local small churches shut their doors. 
to feed that church. Oh. Say so, that again, Tim. Say it again. For for every mega church that grew, yeah, and when it got to a thousand people, seven smaller churches shut their doors. They went, oh. they went out of business. Yeah, just went mm. So what happens is discipleship <coughs> no longer takes place. Mm -hmm. The small churches have people who care. So a smaller church will have leaders in it that do the work of ministry. But a big church has uh, what I call the Hollywood syndrome. You watch people on a stage. Yeah. Not a whole lot of touch goes on there. Mm. Okay. We talked about the fruits. We talked about love. Now, the second one is joy. So let's look at three, four scriptures. Let's look at Romans 14, 17. And then who, who would like to take Nehemiah 8, 10? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, have you got that, jo Joanne? I have, yeah. Okay, and then Psalms uh, sixteen eleven. I got that one. Okay, so we got uh, Romans fourteen seventeen, Nehemiah eight ten, and then Psalms sixteen eleven. We're gonna talk about joy, and the other was Romans fourteen seventeen. If nobody's got that. I can grab that. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we see one of the fruits is joy in the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit, brings joy into our life. Okay, Nehemiah 8, 10, who's got that? Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There you have it. So if we're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about not only joy, but we're talking about strength that comes by having joy. So joy strengthens people. You know, and, you know, the Bible talks about sadness makes the bones rot. Hmm. So there's a big difference here between having sadness and joy. So I, I want to be strengthened. I want to find myself in so much joy that I got power, strength, and that nothing can get me down. I want to be able to walk through the valley, the shadow of death, and not mm. worry about it. <clears throat> okay, mm. Psalm 1611. Who's got that one? Yeah, I've got that one. You have, made no, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Okay. So we see the, the fruit that God is working in us of the joy is not only strengthening us, but there's also an anointing that takes place. When we talk about the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we, we forget that the Holy Spirit who lives in us has anointed us for works of service. And he also is working in us, bringing this fruit out, this love. He's, he's helping us to love people. He helps us to have joy in the midst of trials and tribulation. You know, I was watching a thing tonight on, uh, on drugs and pot. They're talking about these babies whose parents are smoking pot every day and what's happening in the the neural receptors of the brain of the baby when they're in the womb and what happens to them when they, when they come out. Well, there's a false joy there by doing drugs. Mm. Is it, is it, so is that like joy is, uh, joy is not happiness, eh? Well, happiness is more surface thing. You can be happy, but one, you can lose happiness quick, but is joy something that's, sticks around deep within is yes that, yes it? and you have joy even in the midst of trials yeah yeah right so you'd be in the like the apostle paul when he got stoned he had joy um peter in jail he had joy so how do you have joy in the midst of trials well that's the fruit of the spirit 
Mm. You know, he's working in us and conforming us to be like Christ. Make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we miss, see, we miss these things about how powerful he is in us. So we really don't take into account, we talk about Jesus' blood, shit on the cross for me, I'm born again. But when we start talking about the third part of the Trinity, the blessing of having him live in us, he's not only quickening our mortal body and giving us power to live a triumphal life, but he's helping us love deeply. Mm. I mean, there are people that I, I don't love. I'm prejudiced to a point, and I don't want to spend time with certain people, but because I got the Holy Spirit, he's shown me to love them. Wow, yeah. Mm. You know, and that's only the fruit of the spirit because it'd be easy for me to walk on the other side of the street. Was well, what Jesus talked about, the rich man for you know, and we do that a lot. Everybody walks on the other side of the street to certain people. So, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Third one, peace. Three scriptures again: Romans fourteen seventeen. <clears throat> Who's got that? Yeah, I got that. John 14, 27. Who's got okay. that? Okay. Okay. And then Philippians 4, 7. Who's got that? Yeah, I got that. What was that? They turned to me. He goes, just write the other one down. Philippians. Uh, Philippians 4, 7. 4, 7. Right. I, I got that one. Yeah, Romans 14, 17. John 14, 27. And Philippians 4, 7. So we're talking about peace again. So let's talk about Romans 14, 17. Who's got that? Yeah. For well, the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we are living. See, a lot of times we don't really take the scriptures and study each word in a verse by looking at it and saying, what's it really saying to us? So every day we live that peace, the peace that passes understanding. Remember, do you guys remember when we went through Romans when I said to you, you can go long periods of time without sin, and you'll know it when you sin? Mm, yep. That he, he equips the human body to overcome? Yeah, I, Tim, I do remember that because we had a big discussion about that afterwards, eh, Willie? <laughs> and I told the guys, I said, hey, hey, you know, I can go a long time without sinning. And they said, no, you can't. <laughs> I said, no, you, we can because of the Holy Spirit in us. It was very... Yeah. It hung around for weeks, Tim, because of you. <clears throat> See, and some people, some people think sin, uh, you know, like looking at a woman. That's not sin. It's lust. You know, and lust is taking a look into where the juices start flowing. It's no, it's no different than looking at a new car. If someone driving a new car, going, oh, oh, I gotta have that. You know, I gotta drive. Can I drive your car, please? Can I sit and smell that car? I just got to be, can I sit in it, please? <clears throat> so there's one thing by looking at a new car and lusting after it, and the other part is sitting in the car. You got to go sit in that car. You just got to feel the smell of that new car. You got to lust after it. So we, we sometimes take the word and we add our own thoughts to it, not what it tells us. Does that make sense? Okay, John 14, 27. Who's got that one? Yes, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let okay. not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah, do that one more time, it's so good. Do that one more time. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, we got to analyze what his peace is. See, if you didn't understand Romans 6, you never understand really what peace is. So, he said, I give you my peace. So, let's just analyze that real quick. What is his peace, do you think? <clears throat> there's a difference. There's peace with God and there's the peace of God, isn't there? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. That was excellent. Okay, keep on going. Let's take this a little farther. Terry just said it's his assurance. And what else? 
insurance. Yeah, having that eternal insurance assurance. Yep, yep. It's peace, isn't it? What, why do why do we have eternal assurance? Because what has Christ done for us? <clears throat> yeah, because he because we've been redeemed, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna say it again. If you understand imputation that he imputed his holiness to us, he set to our account his mm -hmm. holiness, right? And we did not earn it, then we can sit back in peace knowing that we did not earn peace. It's he has given us his peace, he's given us his holiness, his blood shed on the cross for us, right? And he declared us holy. He didn't make us holy, he declared us holy. That's why when we fumble and stumble, grace covers a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. and I have peace of pastors understanding because I understand that I did not earn it. It was a free gift, and he imputed it to me. Mm. Now, I have to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, so I can't yield my members to sin. So I can't yield my members to go touch another woman. That's to my wife only. I can't lust after another car. I drive what I own. Okay? I'm not going to go steal another guy's loaf of bread. That's his bread. I'll go work and earn my own money for my own bread. But because I understand justification, sanctification, imputation, I understand Christ's peace to me. I live in his peace. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Philippians 4 7. Who's got that one? <clears throat> yeah, that was my one. Um, 4 7. He said, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is a hard one because how can peace guard your heart? Mm. And your minds. In your mind, how does it transcend? Transcends understanding, eh? Yeah. Yeah, is that it, is, it. Is, is peace the opposite of fear, do you think? Absolutely, yes. Yes. I think yeah. also um, having faith. Yeah. Faith in what, though? Um, and that God provides. He watches over us. He, um, uh, so my example would be when we got mandated and we walked out in joy, laughing. You know, at first it wasn't easy, but then it's, you know, doing prayer, believing that God had a purpose, a purpose for, um, us maybe not being at that job anymore, that we walked out in joy and happiness, um, laughing, um, and God, knowing that God was going to provide for us. Yep, yep. yep. Re remember when there was uh, Abraham, there's no sacrifice. <laughs> He's a sacrifice his son. And he mm. went down, oh, wait, 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 hold off your hand. There's... There's a sacrifice, an animal right over there for you. So God is always providing for us. He's provided salvation. He's provided justification. He's provided his blood to forgive us of all sin, which brings the peace. Mm. So because I know he's provided to have a relationship with me through the blood of Jesus Christ, I have peace that transcends understanding. I don't understand the mind of God, but by faith, I believe what he did on the cross is for me. And he mm. calls me his child now, a son, a daughter. So now I have peace and past his understanding, knowing that he loves me even when I am unloving or, or unlovable. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes. So it's a bit like you, is it a bit like you said, sort of um, Joanne as well? You know, there's all the stuff thrown at us, and by rights, in a worldly sense, 
we ought to be panicking and freaking out and everything. But somehow, somehow in the midst of it, we're not. We, we're at peace, you know, and um, mm. and we're 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 calm. Uh, even oh, though we I have to admit, I have to admit, the first week I was very angry, and then I got over myself. You know, mm. God helped me to just trust in Him and move ahead and. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, eh? Yeah. Mm. Hey, I'm not saying life is perfect. I'm just saying that there's a wall, and a lot of times in life we bounce our head off that wall, and if we don't understand the basics what Christ did for us, we could crumble down. But because we understand just in case, in case, in case right, we hit that wall, we go, wait a second, got to remind myself of the faith that Christ gave me, and i got to walk in the fruit of what the Holy Spirit is working in me. So if he is working in you this love and joy and this peace, right, it's him working it in us. And we forget it's him in us working it. Mm. He is producing that fruit in us. Mm. See, a lot of times we think we're just doing it. But we don't understand that the third part of the Trinity is fertilizing it. He's equipping us. Yeah. Okay, four, long-suffering. Uh, one verse only, Second Peter 3, 9. Yeah. So, first, Second Peter 3, 9, who's got that one? So, long-suffering is also translated patience. So, he, he's working in us, long-suffering, or patience, too. Anybody got that, Second Peter 3, 9? Yep. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Okay. <clears throat> He's not slack in what? Patient. Yeah, his promise. He's made a promise, and he's not stuck in it. But he's long-suffering, he's patient in allowing people to be conformed into the image of Christ or to get saved. Mm. So the fruit of him, God, him, the Holy Spirit, is working in us the same patience as long-suffering, knowing that he's working in us, Right? to conform us to the image of Christ, or working in us so we can help other people get saved or to mature. So the Lord is not slack concerning his, his promise. That's some count of slackness, but his long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that we should come to. So think about his, his long-suffering toward you, and every time you blow it, He's patient, guy, towards you. Right? Yeah, that's patience, man. (laughs) So so how do we show patience to to people? Mm -hmm. You know? I I told you the story about I started a business with a guy with a pastor and this missionary evangelist guy. And I sold one of my rentals, $200,000. And they took the money and closed down the business. So they ripped me off of $200,000. So uh, it was a sad day in my household. It was a sad day for my wife to look at me and say, you know, honey, you sure screwed up on that one. (laughs) <laughs> yep and we had no recourse yep. so when it came to patience and long suffering I had to have patience and learn how to forgive a great debt mm-hmm. so God has worked in me to help me understand as many sins as I have committed against him and other people that he was long suffering and patient with me to repent and 
what it cost Jesus on the cross, his whipping, his blood, his crown of thorns. Uh, the Bible says, I am making up, Paul said, in my body what is lacking in Christ. Yeah. So I am being conformed by the, by the hard times I go through to conform me. And I've had to be patient and not want to go and find that guy and uh, whip him, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I like to uh, give a personal testament just real quick. Uh, being in the military for over 20 years and the backstabbing of politics in the military, believe it or not, it does happen. Um, I just, being in the Navy town, because I retired on the Naval Air Station where I live, it's about 17 miles of my way. And so it, it, I see the airplanes and stuff flying around and uh, it triggers my past. So it, it was eating me alive because uh, it keep triggering what would happen, the bad things that is, you know, the good things too, but the bad things, and they just make me irritable and, and grumpy. So when I list what he just said, is it is able to understand, unless you forgive, even though you may never see them on the physical earth again, uh, you have to let it go. You have to forgive them. And that's what I did. So I'm at peace. I'm more at peace now because of what the scripture says that I, if it do trigger it i actually develop the self-control to don't dwell on it which just causes me emotional stress and spiritual stress Thank exactly you. okay mm. this is a good time to talk about triggers here okay you guys see this our brains yep. have cavities in them holes and we have thoughts and actions that happen to us so when something happens to us, this liquid goes across these cavities. And we, a lot of times a thought or something will fall down here, and now that's a memory. So now we have a memory. So I, I helped this girl who was raped. While she was being raped, uh, a fire engine or policeman went down the street, the siren. So every time she heard a siren, she was feeling Pain smelled the breath of that guy on her while she was being raped. And she couldn't understand. She's a Christian. She couldn't understand how God allowed that to happen to her. No, oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's someone walking in. You know? So let's talk real quick about tri triggers. So what happens is those memories go down here and they fall down here. And then when a, a trigger takes place, a smell, a thought, uh, an airplane going by, whatever it may be, goes down. And that trigger lights that up. And now that feeling and that trigger takes place and we, we feel the emotion tied to that. So what takes place is anytime we have a trigger and we have a feeling, we bring that to Jesus Christ and that cross. So what happens now when we bring that to Jesus Christ and we've covered it in the blood of forgiveness the next time that happens, we have a memory of it, <clears throat> but we know we've given it to Christ, but we don't have the sparks. We don't have the, the emotion that's tied to that. The memory is still there, and the memories never go away, but we can forgive, and the emotions that are tied to that, and the pain and the suffering eases mm. as we go through that. So now you don't have those sparks. You just have the cross of Christ touching that memory and touching that emotion. That's why we who have gone through things, hurt and pain, a lot of times people who are counselors, they've gone through so much pain off and hurt that they now want to be a counselor. A lot of people who get saved who went through hard times become pastors because they want to share that forgiveness with people. They want to help people through those things. Mm. So, the peace of God that passes understanding can rule our hearts, even though our hearts have been broken, even though our hearts have been stabbed. That's incredible, eh? Yeah. So, He, the Holy Spirit, cleanses our minds, even. So, even though we have these memories that took place, right? Uh, God forgives. I was watching the testimony of a lady who was a prostitute until she was 40. And 
she went to jail. She was in prison for three years. She came out of prison, couldn't find a job. And the only thing that saved her was someone talked to her about the Bible. She started going through Bible studies, and she was transformed, and now she's a counselor. Hmm. Like at 40-some yeah, yeah. years old, she got her degree, uh, you know, went back to school in her 40s. But it was God who transformed her life. And now she talks about what happened to her when she was 15, when she started selling her body at the age of 15 and all those years. But how can she now, in a short period of time, after 40 years, be completely transformed and forgive people and have peace that passes understanding? Mm -hmm. And those things don't trigger her anymore. She's got enough memories that can trigger her and bring up all that pain and suffering, but that emotions are gone now. Mm -hmm. She trusts in Christ. Mm. Mm. Wow. She now she's got patience. She's she has long suffering to deal with people. So people who are coming out of bad backgrounds, she can she can have patience with them. Mm. And that is the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay. What happens after that? After you're patient with people, well, we have gentleness. So let's look at a couple of scriptures. Uh 2 Timothy 4:2. And 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Who's got 2 Timothy 4, 2? Yep, I got that one. Who's got 1 Corinthians 13, 4? Yep, 13, 4. Okay, you got it. Yep. 2 hey, right Tim 4, 2. This isn't Tim 2, but this is this is 2 Timothy in the Bible, right? <clears throat> uh, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Patience, kindness, gentleness. How do you instruct people? How do you preach to people? How do you tell people about Jesus Christ? Mm. Correct, rebuke, and encourage. With great yep. patience and careful instruction. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Hey. Yeah. But going by what the churches do today, most, not all, they don't instruct people like that. They want you to be uh, friendly, uh, friendly evangelism. Yeah. Friendly, friendly. It, it, you got to speak with authority. Yeah. It, it, Warm it's down what love. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay, First Corinthians thirteen four. Who's got that one? I have uh, love suffers long, and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Yeah. Whoa, that's a hard one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's mm. hard. No, I. I, I can't do that unless unless I have the power of the Holy Spirit in me. I can't do First Corinthians thirteen four. Yeah, so that's an, yeah, that's an interesting verse. I got a phone call from a fellow uh, uh, Coach Dave Live Huddle, and uh, this lady she's gives scriptures in the beginning of the show. Coach calls her to read scripture not by her own choice it goes through uh, coach and she told me that people are complaining again of they want to do the prayer other than let the lady do it and uh, and i you look at her envy it does not envy but people are so inter intertwined with their emotion of their flesh than their spiritual sense and it, it's it's silly. It's absolutely silly. Yep, yep. Well, I, I'm going to say it again. He, the Holy Spirit, produces this fruit in us, and it is him working that in us. And we don't sometimes take a focal point and look at that and say, look, it, the, the actions and the fruit that's in me is because God is working in me. Mm. And we, we some people may doubt that God is really working in them. So all you have to do is look from last year to this year and see your fruit and have the evidence that God is really working in us. Once you understand that, Tim, just, you know, so we've got that understanding, 
no longer can our love be all puffed up like because it ain't us right <laughs> right yeah um yeah yeah interesting yeah yeah, you got to yield to him. Okay, one more. Six. Goodness. Ephesians 5 9. Good <coughs> Has someone got that, or am I racing someone to it? No, you're all for it. 5 9, eh? Run the race. Whoever gets there first. No, I'll beat them, Tim. That's no, slow, mate. That's no, slow. Okay, here we go. I'm there. For the fruit, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. It's in brackets for some reason. Hmm. Don't know why. So, when we deal with the fruit again, we're talking about the fruit: goodness, righteousness, and truth. So, the fruit is this goodness. And it's who produces this in us? The Spirit. Mm, yeah. So, really, I, I hate to tell you guys this, but if it wasn't for him, the Holy Spirit, you'd be one evil sucker. <laughs> yep. You'd be selfish. You'd have your own ambitions. You'd be going your own way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're right, Isaiah 59 says you'll never find peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next one. Faith or faithfulness. Matthew. Uh 25. Faith. 21 through 23. Matthew, 25, 21 through 23. Who's got that one? Yep. Is his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into you the Lord, joy of your Lord. Um, where to? Keep going? Uh, all the way through 23. You got it. Okay. Lord, he said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have, oh, I've read that. I've done that. Thank you. Hang on, Joe. Do that again, mate. You, you broke up my end. Yeah, do 23 again. Okay. Lord, verse 23. Lord, he said, Lord, uh, sorry, the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter in the joy of your Lord. So, because a person's faithfulness, yes. the Lord blesses him. And what do they enter into? Joy. Of the Lord. Joy. Yeah. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord. Because of faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. So the Holy Spirit, which we talked about joy earlier, is part of the fruit. But this faithfulness is being worked in us. Okay. <laughs> Next one, meekness. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty nine. I got it. Okay. Eleven twenty nine. Yep. Roger. Okay. It says. Oh gosh. It says, "Take my." Is this right? Matthew 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yep. For I am gentle, meek, and lowly in heart. So he's not talking about weak. I'm sure we've all heard the term, what meek is. It's 
it's your uh, you you're a lion, not a pussy cat, and you're a lion that has self control. Is what meekness is. Mm. You can you can normally eat associate. Mm. Sorry, I was going to say normally oh, when I was brought up, I, it was associated with weakness, with being weak. Yeah, hey, someone that's meek and mild, you know, real. Is it? Is, hey, what's that? Dormouse. Yeah, dormouse. <laughs> there you go. But it's not. Yeah. It's not. No. The best illustration I ever heard was one guy said, you know, meekness is pretty much like Christ. He had all the power in the world doing anything he wanted, but uh, he was more of a lion in control, not a pussycat. He could mm-hmm. eat and kill any pussycat like that. Boom. Right? Mm. But he was a lion with self-control. Let anybody push him around either. No, nope, no. Nope. But he was me. Mm. It's so weird to take on that same yoke. You used to yoke yourself in that same power. So, again, he, the Holy Spirit, who is a dunamis, a dynamite, uh, yeah. who equips Samson, and Elijah, and, you know, gives us power to do all these great exploits. We're yoked up with him. Take my yoke upon you. And you guys know what yoke is, right? Yeah. Mm. It's, not, it's not the yellow of an egg. It's what they put on cows when they would plow their fields. So two cows could plow together. You take a yoke, put two cows together, oh, right. you plow yeah, the yeah, field. Yeah. So mm. you're plowing with Jesus Christ. You're hooked with him. And mm-hmm. you're doing the same thing. Can I just say, like, this is one of those things where I hear and I've, I've done it before too, where um, you'd be saying or praying something like, Lord, make me gentle, make me humble, but the, the, it's take my. So there's, it requires us to do something. Yeah? Yep. Yep. And it, meekness and humbleness, that it's part of what God is working in us through the power of the, of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, one, to go from a pussycat to a lion takes experience. You've got to know that God is with you or that God has trained you or that God is working in you to get there. Yeah. Yeah, So he can't can't, um, make you be humble. You've got to work in yourself to be able to become that person. Yeah. He's, he's growing that in us, mm. right? Have you ever seen, uh, you know, a guy who's big and tough and, and the line and he just beats up on everybody, the bully in school type of person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah the, only, the only time a bully becomes meek is when somebody else beats the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, when a bully gets a snot kicked out of him, then they become more meek. A little more gentle. Mm. So God allows us to get our rears kicked at times to uh, mm. keep us meek at times. Mm. So, so Tim, this this meek thing, um, just trying to understand it because you know my experience is that of um, probably grew up very like not believing in self. Um, probably pretty timid really and then i then i find my masculinity and i find the, the the manly part of me you know the lord turns you into more of a warrior right yep um and so finally you start finding that stride whatever that looks like um and then you learn about <laughs> meekness and you've got to contr- now <laughs> you know you've got to kind of now work on pulling that back right so 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 you you can as an analogy you've become this um the soldier that's equipped for the first time and you, you you know what you're capable of doing and you can stand your ground. And then this thing, meekness, comes in, um, which is the next level again, isn't it? I mean, power or force um, controlled, you know, when you have control over it, uh, I've seen, you know, I, I see you see those big excavators that those guys that, you know, they can dig rocks and dig whatever and they, pour a cup of tea with the excavator, eh? Have you seen that? When they, you know, because because it's power under control. And I, I don't know, I just I just seem to struggle with that, you know? I don't know why, but 
Um, I, and I think it's tied into, you know, we look at the church and we see how powerless it is and everything, and we want to, you're almost trying to fill a gap, you know. It doesn't work, yeah. I don't think, but but you don't want to back down because you spent your whole life getting to this point yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. I was just... Uh... Of Jesus with the experience of the women caught in adultery. You know, the people banded around, they asked this question, and he got on there to on the ground. He prepared himself to uh, uh, equip and help these people get an understanding. You go to like James one nineteen. It says, "Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath." Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you when you what Tim is doing is outstanding and getting more of an understanding. He's got me. He helped me grow a lot. Mm. Okay. And my approach when I offer the gospel and, and so forth is you, you go out and do it. And then you find a, your oops, then you correct your oops and you approach it and keep it in a spiritual way instead of your fleshly lusts of panic and frustration because uh, when you're, for me, I'm a street preacher, and I encounter Satanists and witches and warlocks and <laughs> really wackos and yeah. stuff, and it's hard to be patient. But when you have what, you, what we just described, it, it allows you to uh, adapt to each uh, situation that you may encounter on the street, mm-hmm. in the grocery store, and so forth. Thank you. Mm. Uh, can I just... Um... When you were talking about how um, the bully, um, I was thinking about um, one of my issues was anger, uh, where I would just slash out. Um, and when I first come to the Lord, um, <clears throat> I had prayer done for me, and the Lord had shown me where the anger had first originated from, and um, so it was when I was five, and so the anger from when I was five up to when I started going to church in my 40s, um, when I'd been shown um, where it had come from, and I had an understanding, and I worked on that, you know, um, just, um, you know, sort of asking uh, for forgiveness for my part, my role in it, but also um, forgiving those who had played a big part in it. Um, You know, I can see that from then to to now, my anger isn't um, like how it used to be. I get upset, but then I'm very quick to um, see where that I'll pray about and ask where that anger's coming from. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That's that is part of life. That is the maturity process we all go through, Mm. and because you can look down the road and see from here to here now and be able to articulate that, you can say, that is Christ working in me. Mm. I know that he, the Holy Spirit, lives in me. I'm born again. I'm a child of God because I can see the fruit of him in me working. Uh, My point was I didn't get the um, the snot kicked out of me. (laughs) That you did or you didn't? I did. Uh, I did by Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A yeah. lot of crying, a lot of crying yeah. and repenting. and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, welcome to being a child. <laughs> you know, being disciplined. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and the Bible says, don't think it's strange. The Bible says, don't think it's strange when you go through these things, when he disciplines us as children. Yeah, mm. yeah. And we think it's strange. Well, why am I going through this hard time? It's because you're... You're a butthead, man. You've been doing yeah. bad things, and God has got to put you in your place again. Yeah, yeah. you got you got to get into the solid food. You have to. Yeah, yeah, solid food. Yeah. You eventually because you better discern the difference between good and evil. It's uh, 
uh, what's, what's that scripture? Um, Ephesians 4. It says in there, be children no more because you go to and fro. That's when we get confused of, of our immaturity into maturity and whether what decision to make to go in that direction. Remember, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to being a Christian, man. You know, I, I, I the Bible says he's conforming us in the image of Christ. Get used to it. And when the day you die, you're done. You're perfected. Yeah. Mm. So if you're still alive, there's a lot of growing. Joe, Joe, you had you had the snot kicked out of you, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's pretty much most of my life. Yeah. Mm. My family too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but look how look how mature and godly you are now, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, amen, bro. Yeah. Sure you're a cool guy. I, I love it, dude. I I told Lindell, I said, like, boy, I hope Joe's there. He's such a cool guy. <laughs> yeah, hey, Joe. Joe, we all came on here, and all Tim wanted to know was whether you were on. <laughs> I was like, hey, dude, what about us? Well, hang on, I'll, I'll just check. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cheeky guy. Okay, the, the last one. Temperance or self-control? Proverbs, which is one verse. Proverbs 16.32. Sixteen thirty-two, did you say? Yeah, sixteen thirty-two. All right, race you there. Where, where gets it? Have fun. Oh, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. There you have it. Self-control. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Mighty is better than a warrior. I'm just thinking, wow. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Wow. That sums up. I mean, I love Proverbs because there's just so many cool mm -hmm. phrases the way they say it. You can conquer a city, but you can't rule your own spirit. You know? The Bible yeah. talks about if you can't rule your own tongue. Right? You can't rule your ship because your tongue is a, is a rudder of the ship. You can't take care of your own tongue, man. You're going to shipwreck yourself. Okay? Mm. I, I like uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 3, 4, and 5. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work with patience. A patience, experience, and experience hope. Yep. And the hope maketh not a shame because of the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, the self-control one, I remember, um, I said to Willie earlier today, as we're working together, we're driving up country, and I said, you know, years ago, I... I said to the Lord, I, I don't know how to be a son of of the living God. You're going to have to show me, Lord, and whatever it takes, you know. And uh, fast forward quite a few years, and I was having a big meltdown at home here, and uh, I think Terry and I were having an argument, whatever it was, and I, you know, walked outside, and I was absolutely raging and pissed off. And and as clear as anything, my I just went straight back to what I'd prayed. The Lord showed me what I'd prayed. And I had a decision to make right there. I'm going to carry on in my self-pity and do whatever I'm going to do in my rage. Or I could stop right there and have some self-control. Because this is not how a son of the living God ought to behave. <laughs> and so I stopped and asked him into that. And, you know, ever since that time, every time something like that happens, I can stop. I can stop and go, well, you know, in the midst of a getting out of control, you know, when things wind you up, and I can actually stop and I go, no, this this is not. This is not the road I'm going to take. I choose not to now. And I can see it way beforehand. And I pull it up a lot earlier. Although some people around me would probably say that I don't. <laughs> but but I know that I do. And I can pull that up. And it, it's, it's a miracle. It is. Because otherwise, I'd be held down that road, man. There's no no stopping me. And I was, a, I was a runaway carriage with no brakes. Yep. See? 
Yeah. There it was. You had that emotion. It, you brought Christ into it. Yeah. You just, you just brought up a memory. You just brought up a memory and how you brought Christ into that memory. What happened? Tim, Tim, I drew the picture there, mate. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here yeah. you go. But no, that's good. That's exactly what it was, eh? It was just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny that I've got a lot of memories of my youth, things that I did that certain that pop up and that because I brought Christ to them, um, I have peace that passes understanding, you know. Uh, mm, mm. Yeah, but I, when I was dating my wife, some things popped up and my wife went, what? You did what? <laughs> you know, so I mean, I, I married a beautiful woman that, you know, had a lot of patience and peace and forgiveness, you know. Anyway. Okay. We got a couple, we got a couple more minutes. I want to just rattle off a couple of scriptures. I just want to just out of the blue, give you three scriptures of the Holy Spirit. Okay. One is Luke eleven thirteen. Luke eleven thirteen. First Corinthians three sixteen. First Corinthians three sixteen. And John 3, 6 through 8. John 3, 6 through 8. So who's got Luke eleven thirteen? 13? Yeah, I got that one. Yeah, who's got 1 Corinthians 3, 16? Yep. And who's got John 3, 6 through 8? Yes, okay. Okay. Luke eleven thirteen coming up. Here we go. If you then, though, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> mm. So uh, I, I don't know how evil some people are, but I know God forgives a whole lot of evil people that gives them the Holy Spirit. Wow. He forgives a lot of sin, a lot of messed up people, and they get born again. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just love God, man. I just mm. when you think about so many scriptures about I just go, wow, how how does that happen? How can he transform a life yeah. and give us? <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh. Okay, first yeah. Corinthians 316. Who's got that? I've got that one now. Did you do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? See, a lot of people don't really comprehend that we are a temple. We're a house. And he, he, the third part of the Trinity, is living in us. Mm. We can't comprehend that the God of the universe is in us. That's hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't comprehend that. No. But I know he's in me because my life has been transformed. Mm. I can look at the fruit of the spirit that's been worked in me, and I know without a doubt that I'm converted, I'm born again, and he's still working in me. I, I'm the temple. And this mm -hmm. temple's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> Gray hair, this, that, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's called weather beaten. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, that's good. It's called maturity, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, maturity is all that, yeah. Okay, maturity, weather beaten. <laughs> so who's got, who's got John? Live. Sorry. Through eight. That which is born of the, the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You know, I, I, can't, I can't remember when the Holy Spirit came into my life. All I know is that he breathed on me, the wind came into me. And I was born again. Mm. Mm. The breath of God came into me. And I was mm. born again. Yeah. You know? 
And I don't know what direction that wind came from. I just know that it blew into me. Mm -hmm. I got born again. Wow. Yeah. To God. Mm. Mm. Amen. You know? Yeah, I, I like to say, uh, uh, when I was in Southern Baptist Convention for 39 years, I had the baptism of repentance. When they dunked me and it's in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I didn't feel nothing about the Holy Spirit. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, he, he became works until many years later, I got in part of the Holy Spirit at McDonald's right yep. there. And a man watched us and came or asked for prayer and stuff this way. And I began my prayer language, speaking in my tongue, and I sing and everything. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, if maybe sometime we, we do another study. We'll probably do one more week after this and hold off to it unless, unless we want to talk about that. But, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for service, fire. When the mighty wind came, the fire came down, closed the tongues and lit on them. And they all had fire. They all had works of service after that. Yeah. Could I ask a question? Sure. Uh, yesterday at church, um, they read about in Matthew 7 about Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto you, to them I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So how were those people able to do those works if they didn't have the Holy Spirit? You know, it seems like Jesus said, I, I never knew you. So they must well, have the Holy Spirit, surely. Yeah, so the word prophecy is, <clears throat> there's two definitions for prophecy. It's foretelling the future or forth telling about Christ. So we don't do a whole lot of foretelling anymore, like, like the Old Testament prophets, when they talked about Israel's going to go through this, and King Nebuchadnezzar's going to go through this, he's going to come and conquer you. We don't really have that kind of, prophecy anymore because Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Mm. So what we have now is we have forth telling about Christ. So we tell people about who Jesus Christ is. But there are a lot of people who tell about Christ that still do works of iniquity. So, I mean, I can tell you famous evangelists who were into prostitution while they're on TV doing the gospel. They were doing works of iniquity while they were still preaching the gospel because it was all about money. Um, I was raised Catholic. So there were a whole lot of Catholic families like myself who did this. Okay, let's go sin this weekend. Let's get drunk. Chase skirts, go after women. Okay, God, I hope I didn't do anything wrong this week. Mm. Oh. And I still practice iniquity, uh, even though I believed in God. So, uh, understanding foretelling and foretelling, and people who think they're doing the worst, but they're really doing iniquity on the side. So, a person can't do both. So either you're born again and God's working in you, or you're being deceptive and you're hiding everything in, in the in the darkness, still doing it. But it's it says that they in in thy name have cast out devils. So how could you do that if you didn't have the Holy Spirit? Well, because it's the authority of Jesus' name. Oh, okay. So even like if the devil um cast out devils, if he did it yep. in Jesus' name. It would still work. Yep, yep. Okay, or if the devil preached the gospel, people could still be saved. Yep, yep. Name, in Jesus' name. Because that's yep. the power, power of the word of God, is it? Yeah. Yep, exactly. You got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. word oh. <clears throat> Thank you for that. <clears throat> Where the seed falls on the ground and it produces fruit or it gets choked off or dries up yeah 
So, mm. yeah. So sometimes it falls to good soil. Sometimes it gets choked. Sometimes it, you know. Yeah. Tim, there's a, um, there was a, actually an American um, pastor or, or, or preacher that toured around. This is back in the 90s, I think. And uh, I really admired him. And he, he came to our church when we were in the big city in, in Auckland. And uh, he, he started confessing what he got up to when he was away from home. And, um, and so he was involved with prostitution and all sorts of stuff. And, and you could tell that he was trying to come clean. And, and it, it sounds like he, you know, he even said to the church, I, don't, I know that by telling you this, you'll probably never want me back here, you know, sort of thing. Um, anyway, um, he was a musician as well, and he put out music. And I looked him up not long ago, so that was, you know. And today he's just a motivational speaker, a, you know, very popular motivational speaker, probably a very good motivational speaker. Um, but, um, um, but, you know, just the, the reason I say that is because he, 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 he seemed like a real man of God, you know, and it's like, you can't walk away from this faith unless you do it knowingly. Hey, I mean, knowing what we know, we. But if somebody has, you, you, you got to ask the question: Were they were they saved? Were, did they receive Christ in the first place, or were they just clever guys making a whole lot of money teaching about the gospel and hey, driving out demons? If I was a demon, I'd pretend I was coming out just to keep them off on the wrong track, eh, and keeping people in self-deceived. I don't know. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, it's interesting, eh? Yeah, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, where you're sealed for the day of redemption. Mm. So, you know, can you grieve him? Yeah. Can can yeah. he run? Yeah. Can he lead you? Yeah. Mm. You know, we 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 create these doctrines, man-made doctrines, like once you're born again, you're always born again, right? Well, where does it say that in the scripture? No. So, you know, you're either you know a Baptist. And your Armenianism or your Calvinist, but you can't be Armenian, you can't be Calvinist. I remember in Bible college, I said to the preacher or to the pet professor one day, I said, Yeah, I'm both. I believe in Armenian, I believe in Calvinism. I believe in both. Well, you can't believe in both. You get you can only believe one or the other. I said, No, there's truth here and there's air here. There's truth here and there's air here. I'll take the truth out of both of them, put them together, and throw the air out. Yeah. And said, you can't do that. And I said, why? He says, because the book here says, this doctrinal book here, I said, that book was written by a man. That was not the Holy Bible. So, <laughs> you know, and he said, you know, you're a rebellious person. You know that, don't you? And I said, no, I'm not rebellious. It's just that it's a man-made teaching. Mm. And I can see clearly. I can see through it. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, I got a D in that class, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I thought he was going to flunk me, but he gave me a D and passed me. I'll never forget that. You know. What does the yeah. D say? <laughs> <laughs> Religion. <laughs> Discernment. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I was just talking to a friend that went through Bible college with me. Yeah, he was a year ahead of me, but we, we were friends. And we were both a little bit on the edgy side. Yeah. Well, he ended up leaving and going the bad road for about 25 years. Sung rock and roll, went with women. In fact, he was in Bible college, and he dated a girl, lost his virginity as a senior, and came to me in tears. And because that happened to him, he decided to walk away from God because he felt like he couldn't be forgiven and just went crazy. Anyway, we now talk, and, and we kindled a relationship. He's got married in his late 40s, mid-40s, mid-40s. And <clears throat> we were talking the other day, and he said to me, you know, Tim, I remember when you used to fight all the professors and ask them questions. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's what you go to school for, don't you, to ask questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you want to whip through a couple of scriptures? Should we call it a night? Um, where are we? It's eight thirty. Give us a couple more scriptures. Um, okay, let's whip through. So we talked about the fruit of the spirit. 
So we went through love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and, and temperance or self-control. Those are all fruits of the Spirit. The Bible talks about that. These are the fruits of the Spirit. Now, <clears throat> let's, let's talk about He, the Holy Spirit, who produces fruit. But let's look at His symbols on what else He's doing in us. So the symbols of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the first one is wind. John 3, 8. What was the scripture, Tim? John 3, 8. And Acts 2, 2. John 3, 8. Acts 2, 2. I got X. Okay. Who's got John? John 3, 8. The wind blows whether it wants. Or not. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So the wind, the Holy Spirit, is like wind. It enters, it moves us, it blows us. And I like it, not only do we get born again by that, but I look at it as a ship with a sail. That if you are being led by the Spirit, he's going to blow into your sail, and he's going to guide your steps. Yeah. So he's, he's going to show you where to go and how to go. He's going to fill your sails full of his breath, his wind, and he'll guide you. Because you are born again. Yes. Acts 2.2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit came, filled the whole house? Yes. So, again, <clears throat> I, look at, I look at this as the breath of God. Yeah. He, the Holy Spirit, is breathing into us and on us, and he guides us. So I, I guess I don't doubt what happens to us anymore. I just kind of allow him to fill my cells and direct me. Kind of reminds you of Adam, doesn't it? Mm, Adam? Yeah, when he breathed into the, the nostrils oh, of Adam. Yeah, yeah, good. That's a good one, yeah. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So... Uh, guys, don't don't worry about every second of your day. Just know that he is going to fill your sails full of him, and he'll he'll direct you. He'll guide you. And sometimes the wind is gentle. You can't even feel it. And sometimes that wind is a hurricane force, just blowing you over. Coming <laughs> so, to hurry up. <laughs> you just don't, you know, some days are calm. Some days are full of... Uh, was flurry, yeah. fury, fury, that's the word. Okay, next one. Wind, next one is oil. Got a few scriptures on this one. Isaiah 61.1. Isaiah 61.1. Yeah. Luke 4, 14 through 18. Luke 4, 14 through 18. And Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. What about Luke? Okay, who's got Acts? Who's got Isaiah? Yeah, I've got Isaiah. Who's got Acts? Okay. Yeah, I've got Acts. Okay, Isaiah 61.1. Yeah, here we go. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Wow, yeah. I, I, yeah that's it. Wow. So anytime we see the word anointing in the Old Testament, a lot of times it's dealing with oil or the Holy Spirit. Mm. Hey, Luke. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see the, they'll be talking about oil. Many times the prophets or people were anointed. Uh, oil was poured over their head, dripped down their beards, and uh, the anointing was there. And the Holy Spirit always guided them after that. 
to Luke uh, 4, 14 through 18. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all, Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Oh. <clears throat> so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And as he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, in a recovery of sight to the blind and to set liberty are uh, set and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You know, when I first became a Christian, that was the first set of scriptures that I received. Yep. Wow. My very first scriptures were those ones. Mm. Luke 4. Did you did you notice that when the anointing came is for yeah. preaching, for service? Yes. For anointing? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <coughs> proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Acts uh, ten thirty eight. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So anytime you see the word anointing or oil, it always has to do for works of service. So a lot of times we think that the anointing is only for tongues or certain things, but really if you look at your life, you'll find out that you are doing works of service and God has anointed you for that. He's empowered you for that. Makes sense, huh? You need oil in your engine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. You certainly do. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise you seize up. You need yep. oil in your frying pan too. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's interesting that a lot of times people think in the word anointing in the old testament only yeah. that uh you know King David you know, Elijah, all these people were anointed with oil, Samuel, and so on. And they started doing all these works of service, and they, God came on them and gave them foot, you know, the anointing came down, and, and this dynamic started taking place because the anointing came down, you know. And we see preachers on TV. You knew you have the anointing come down, you know. And the, and if you give money to my ministry, I will, I will send you my prayer cloth, and the anointing <laughs> will come down, you know. We think of that, not that when you get born again, now he, the Holy Spirit, is working in us, and now we find ourselves doing works of service, preaching the gospel, talking to people, uh, intercessory prayer for people, um, you know, tithing, helping them out, giving food. So we find ourselves doing works of service now. Mm. And that's the anointing. That's the, the anointing. Mm -hmm. Well, the churches are doing mostly socialism instead of revealing religion. It's socialism religion. Yeah, yeah, but we make it sound like that, that the anointing is some big giant. But no, it's the wind blows into us. And we start to do these, you know, small things to big things. It's God working in us. It's the anointing. And, and what does that look like? Well, three, the dub. Let's talk about the symbol of the dub. Uh, Matthew 3.16, who's got that? And Galatians 5.22-23. So Matthew 3.16 and Galatians 5.22 and 23. Yeah, I've got Matthew. I'm heading there. Okay. Matthew 3.16, we're coming over. Who's got Galatians 5.22 and 23? We got that? Someone's got that one? All right. Matthew 3, 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, 
and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and light, lighting on him. Yep. Yeah, keep on going just for the heck of it. I'll show you something too. Keep and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Do you guys notice that when Jesus was baptized, not only did the Holy Spirit come out like a dove on him, but the Father said, this is my son, and with him I am well pleased. When you were baptized in water, the Father is saying, you are now in my family, and I am well pleased with you by his mm. obedience. Mm. You know, a lot of times we don't talk about how pleasing following God is and being obedient to him is. Mm. And how the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove, the gentleness of the Spirit guiding us. You know? When I when I do bat water baptisms for people, I read that verse and I said, people, do you know that God is well pleased with you? And most of the people in their stage of life when they forget water baptized, it's right after repentance. So they're just coming out of pretty much a bad background. And so for a person who's coming out of sin to hear that they're now part of God's family and the Holy Spirit is going to live in them and that God is saying, I'm well pleased with you. I couldn't tell you how many people I saw fall down and cry. Just start weeping mm. that God could love them and that God was pleased with them. Mm. You know, I mean, just first time I ever read that, I thought, wow, wow, how could God be pleased with me? A dirty, rotten sinner. Just by the obedience of being baptized, by repentance. Yeah. Okay, water. So then a symbol of the Holy Spirit. John 4.14. John 4.14. 1 Corinthians. Hang on, did we do, did we do um, Galatians 5? Oh. Well, Galatians no, 5.22 and 23. Yeah, Galatians 5.22 and 23. Did someone have their finger in that, or what? Yeah, it was supposed to be Jeff. He messed up on that. Uh, was it Willie? Willie was going to nail that one. Huh? Little muted, Willie. Yeah, what was it? Five what? 22 and 23. Yeah, 522. It's about the fruit of the Spirit, is it? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. We just went through that. Oh, yeah, did we? Okay, sorry. Did I miss a truck here? Yeah. No, we've been going through that all night. That's what he's been talking about. <laughs> uh -huh. I was wondering what he was going on about, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my Galatians is numbered wrong because I can't find it. <laughs> you said 520. Oh, what? 522. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. Fine. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Water. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have now the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Was, was that it? To yep, 25 Yeah. I got there. I got there. So we see the Holy Spirit as wind, oil, and a dove. <coughs> and now water. John 4.14. 1 Corinthians 10.4 and Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 29. Got, I've got John 4.14. Okay, who's got 1 Corinthians 10.4? Yeah, I'll grab that. And who's got Ezekiel 36, 25 yep. through 29? I've got Ezekiel. Okay. 
Somebody else has got Ezekiel? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Water. John, 414. Who's got it? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into each everlasting life. There you have it. Everlasting life, water, the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 10.4. Who's got it? 10.4. I'm meant to have that one. Hang on. Uh, I'll start from three because it's in the middle. It's the middle of a sentence, by the way. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Drink it in the Holy Spirit, Christ. Mm. Mm. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 29. Or 27. 25, well, okay. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I give to you, to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your God. And 29, was it? No. Oh, okay. Cleansing of, by water, the Holy Spirit watching us here a little bit. Yeah. Five, fire. So we got wind, oil, dove, water, here comes the fire. Isaiah 4 4. First Kings 18 38. And Acts 2 3. So who's got Isaiah 4 4? Yeah, I'll get that one. Okay. Uh, First Kings 18 38. 18 38. Okay. And Acts. Okay. And Acts 2 3. Isaiah 4.4 4. There we go The Lord will wash away The filth of the woman Of Zion He will cleanse the blood stains From Jerusalem By a, by a spirit of judgment And a spirit of fire mm. So we know There's going to be some uh, firing action Taking place and we won't even read the book of Revelation, what takes place about it. the world being burned up. God created a whole new one. Okay, uh, First Kings 1838. Uh, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Okay, so we know that the Holy Spirit consumes a whole lot of stuff. Mm. Mm. Yep. When that fire falls down, man, a lot of stuff is consumed. Okay. Acts 2-3. Uh, I've got that one. There appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit also comes with fire. There's a tongues of fire. Something that's taking place. And you know what? I've always wondered about that. Tongues of fire a long time ago. I used to think, why did the Holy Spirit use the word tongue of fire? Well, right after that, everyone else started preaching. And people were persecuted, prosecuted, beat up after that, but they all used their tongue to proclaim Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Mm. They were all on fire for Jesus. Mm. All became Jesus freaks. All right. Okay, yep. the last the last one, wine. Oh yeah. Wine. Isaiah uh fifty-five one. Or is it five five? Might be five five. Can't read, can't look at my own handwriting on that one. 
Uh, Psalms 104, 15. Is that 5 5? Yeah, it's got to be 5 oh. 5. Yeah. Psalms 104, 15. Acts 2 13. And Ephesians 5 18. I got X. I got Isaiah. They're already there. Okay. Psalms 104, 15. Okay, go ahead. Who's got uh, Isaiah? Yep. <clears throat> now I now I will tell you what I'm going to do in my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. Is that it? Is it? <clears throat> well, and yeah, that's what he's going to do in his vineyard. Yep, yep. So uh, even though wine is supposed to be about merriment, we also see that there could be some fruit that's going to be trampled out. Sometimes the wine presses are going to be cast down. Psalms 104, 15. And wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. Mm. Okay, and then uh, who's got Acts 2, 13? What was the Ephesians yeah. one? Uh, what one was that? I'm in there. Oh, Ephesians 5, 18. 5, 18, yeah. Acts 2, 13, who's got that? Others mocking said they are full of wine. So Others mocking said they are full of new wine. Yep. So when they were speaking in tongues, doing their thing, people thought they were drunk with wine. Yes, yes. yes. And Ephesians 5.18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we end with the symbols of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, like wine. Makes you a little merry there, a little happiness. So we got the symbols of wind, oil, dove, water, fire, and wine. So these are just symbols of what he, the Holy Spirit, is doing in the life of believers. He acts as wind, he acts as oil, he acts as a dove. It acts as water, it acts as fire, and it acts as wine. So, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. We talked about the symbols of the Holy Spirit. They go hand in hand with each other. Mm. Mm. Yeah, now that's good, Tim. That's real good. Fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> mm. You know, and there's... So many other scriptures we could read. I just tried to pick out some of the best ones because uh, we could, you know, go through five or six on every single one and talk about those. Yeah. Uh, but the, the good thing about this is simply knowing what he is doing, the Holy Spirit, what he looks like in scriptures, and what he's doing in the life of, of the believers. Mm. So a lot of times we don't, we don't look at him, the third part of the Trinity, as much as we do what the father's doing or what the son is doing. Yeah. So this way, anytime you think about the wind, you're always thinking about how the Holy Spirit is either moving you or breathing in you, like Adam, filling your sails, oil, he heals, he anoints you with oil, makes you strong. You got cuts, he pours oil on your cuts, he anoints you. Dove comes down with the Holy Spirit, lights on you. He's gentle. He guides you. Water. He cleanses you. Uh, mighty rushing water, like a waterfall, fills you. Fire. He cleanses you. Burns up all the chaff. Burns up all the yuck in our life. And then wine makes us merry. It makes us fruitful. If you're not fruitful, he prunes it back and he steps on the vineyard. So, let him rule and reign. Mm -hmm. Any awesome. questions? Or any two cents you want to throw in? Uh, some people say the Holy Spirit is like electricity. Um, 
but I guess in the Bible time, electricity hadn't been discovered, had it? So uh, yeah. couldn't use that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the experience would have been an electrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I guess you could say Debbie Boone, he lights up your life. <laughs> you guys remember that song? Yep. I'm a terrible singer. Well, I'll sing it again. <laughs> hey, can you, guys, you guys can't hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. All right, I'm back on again. I don't know what happened then, but it's given me all sorts of messages. <laughs> God bless us and muted you, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, anything you guys want to add? Anything God's doing in your life? Well, he woke me up this morning. Mm -hmm. He woke us all up this morning. That's a yeah. big deal. Yep. Tim, the um, the uh, uh, what would you call it? The unction of the Holy Spirit. You know, you know when you have an impression or you have the Holy Spirit's talking to you, but you you kind of got to make the call. Where is is that the Lord? You know, and um, should should it should the should the voice of the Lord be ultra clear to us? His sheep hear His voice, right? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes, times I, I really, I'm d almost doubting whether I'm hearing from the Lord. I think, man, mm -hmm. was that, you know? And and when I do doubt, I think that was him back. That was <laughs> definitely him later on. But at the time, I really struggle. Is that is that how it's meant to be? Well, you know what I do? I I, I just tell everybody act on the impressions you get, because if it's God. There's going to be fruit to it, and if it's not God, well, then it's out of the flesh, and much some fruit might come, and it might not, you know. Mm. And, and if, it's a, if it's a good work, it's just going to be a good work, and there's nothing wrong with a good work, <clears throat> you know. Mm. And, and I think some of those unctions of the Holy Spirit, I think a lot of those we know. I mean, I mean, they're they're so powerful. We know he's doing something. Mm. And then and when the well, gentle breeze is there, I think it's just a choice. For me, sometimes it's like, um, like I have this feeling inside of me. If I don't do it for uh, urgency, um. Or something, you know, like it wants to come out, and I start, you know, inside me, I start getting uh, not agitated, but it feels like butterflies, and I need to let it out. Right. Yeah. I remember one time I um, there was something um, I felt the Lord wanted me to do. But I remember hearing someone say, um, you know, if you don't know, pray and ask, um, <clears throat> pray and ask whether, um, what was it? Um, you know, does that spirit believe that Jesus died and was risen? I think it was something along those lines. And then I got sort of a clear thing that it wasn't from God. It was like a buzzing, something that wasn't normal. Um, and I knew that it wasn't from the Lord. Okay. You know, you know, let, me, let me just clarify this a little bit. A lot of times we think of the Holy Spirit or unctions as if they're a big black cloud with rain and just pours on us and something happens compared to the fruit of the spirit 
for he's constantly growing in us and working in us. And then that big, giant, juicy plant is there. Right? So we, we, it's, more, it's more of a ongoing seasonal plantings that keep on growing. And then we have an occasional cloud that comes down and bursts upon us and, you know, waters us. A typhoon type thing. And because the churches spend so much time on Sunday morning thinking that it's a gusher cloud coming down, that we think we're waiting for this gusher cloud like we do on a Sunday. Because that's how it's promoted compared to the Holy Spirit every single day working in us, growing his fruit in us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's easier to see, isn't it? That's clear. Hey, that growing us each day, as yeah. opposed to thinking that there's this. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good way of explaining it. I think. Are you yeah. talking like signs and wonders? Yeah, that's good. Everybody's looking for the signs and wonders first, yeah. and they do anything. Yeah, ex yeah, excellent. That's good. And uh, yeah. there's another example of the oil. It's in um, James five, where it says, "Anyone sick among you, let him call for the elders and let them pray and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord." So is that is that like they're putting uh, the Holy Spirit or calling the Holy Spirit onto that person? Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Like for heal a healing kind of yep. situation. Yep. So um, my, I, I'm part of um, a healing rooms, and um, that's what we do in our healing rooms. Um, so under the, the umbrella, well, what they usually do is that they ask people to write down why they've come in and what they're asking for healing for. In our healing rooms, we, we don't do that because we want people to know that we're not praying for something because we know what it is. We want them to know that it's not us, that it's the Holy Spirit that's, you know, doing all the work and that we're only vessels. Um, you know, which is, you know... Oh, I don't know why I even said that. Oh, yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I hear that when you say we don't write it down because so we know it's the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, I think that uh, a lot of times when we pray for people, sometimes people don't get healed or there's not a whole lot of fire, water, oil taking place because there could be secret sin in that person's life. Yeah, well, that's why, so in our one, um, so a lot of times people come might come in and say that their leg's sore, and our team, um, we have teams that, one, we have an intercessor that's in the waiting room, you have people that are going to be doing the prayer for the person who are praying beforehand, and usually we get scriptures during that time, and when we pray for the person, um, it's, you know, like, we know where, where the hurt is on them, but the Lord's also giving us, or even the person that's come in, you know, it's not the physical, it's something spiritual. Usually, 90% of the time, it's unforgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. Um, and the Lord will either give them a picture or a word. And uh, the scriptures always line up with what that person's been given. So they're given the scriptures before we start prayer and that. And then we um, open open them up, you know, after we've done prayer and that. Um, yeah, and... That's just an example of, you know, it's not saying, well, for us, it's just, you know, like we know that we're only a vessel and um, that it's, it's all God, 
Holy Spirit, you know, they're not getting fire in that, but they are getting a word or sometimes a picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and the Bible says God is the one that will heal them. So we anoint him with oil. There's the faith, believe what God's going to do, and it's up to him to do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by faith, we obey the scriptures by doing what he's called us to do, and it's up to him to make that decision, right? Because like when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it says that the Holy Spirit gives gifts to the men as he wills. He, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, wills to give these gifts to individuals, right? So when we pray for people, it is he knows the hearts of every individual and does the healing or doesn't do the healing <clears throat> or gets them to repent or whatever it may be. Because sometimes we don't even know the mind of the Lord. We just by faith do things, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I tell people all the time, you know, sometimes I, I have pizza the night before and I have what I call pizza dreams. You know, I can't tell what's the Holy Spirit or it's the pizza I ate. That's because of the cheese, because cheese has morphine in it. Did you know? No, oh, I didn't know. No. Yeah. Morphine. I love cheese. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Put, uh, the, cheese, the morphine is put there uh, by God. It's it's to help the baby bond with the mother oh. yeah, in, the, in the milk. And so when it's made into cheese, it's very concentrated. The morphine is even more concentrated. Mm. Oh. And it's, that's why it's addictive. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, something else to add to my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No wonder I like pizza so much. <laughs> oh. Pizza and wine, two of my favorite foods. <laughs> oh, I like dairy farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope this is a little insightful. Yeah, you know, it is. It's... It is. That, those symbols, they just just before you go, um, Tim. Those symbols, um, I get the, I get the oil. I get the wind actually. The oil, like as a symbol, you know, of to re reflect upon for us, because you know, of, um, with oil we've anointed people with oil. We understand the oil mm -hmm. piece. Um, water, you know, baptism. Fire, fire is a little bit different, eh? That, like, to, to actually physically understand it as a symbol to reflect the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm, I understand what we've been taught tonight, so I, I get that as symbols, but I'm just trying to think, you know, like, um, how to use that as a symbol, you know, in, in my thinking. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you said, um, you know, I can imagine tongues of fire and then when you explained it, I thought oh, yeah that that spirit is going forth and speaking the truth you know so people you know the gospel is that how we meant to think of that as a symbol kind of or do we think of it in more of it in its um full state as fire flame you know burning something you know i suppose purifying yeah burning up and purifying is that how we should be kind of thinking these things through or is, am i getting too carried away <laughs> no 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 it's just what the scriptures you know uses as symbols of what he does and how he works mm. yeah so yeah. if we have the fruit and we're walking in the fruit and it's producing in us every single day then there's times when he the holy spirit is that wind and how does he blow into us and is it a light wind or is it a heavy wind the fire. What, what does really fire do? It will consume things. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like what we talked about a week ago where the the Holy Spirit was over the darkness of the deep of the water yeah. before God created things. You know, I mean, what's he doing hovering over the deeps of the waters? What was, what was he doing? You now we read that and we go, well, what's the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters for? Well, he and the Father and the Son were getting ready to do creation. So he was checking out the waters, what he was going to produce. Mm. Father was getting ready to make Adam. You know, Jesus was going to help Adam name all the animals. You know? So mm. I, I don't think we really ponder enough 
of what the Trinity was doing and, that, and what they're doing even today. You know, yeah. when you think about the creation, that was a dynamic thing. Well, when a person gets born again, that's a dynamic thing. Mm -hmm. So what really happens when a person is born again? Well, the wind comes in, they're healed with oil, there's a dove anointing takes place, there's water washing away a bunch of stuff, there's fire burning up stuff in their life, and there's wine that makes them, makes them excited. Nice, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is he doing in us? Well, he's winding us, he's oiling us, he's, he's making a dove, a water, a fire, and, and wine. And that happens not only when we get born again, but it's ongoing in our life every day. Mm. Chase yeah. along, along with the fruit every day. Mm. Yeah, cool. Mm. You know, because, I mean, he's still burning up in me. He still lights fires mm. in me and shows me areas that need to be consumed of my flesh. Mm. And mm. I've yielded these things to him, but they they're still being he's still working in me it's still coming out you know mm. every day i say god you know guide me let the wind blow me where you want me to go I, what do you want me to do today yeah you know yeah so, wow okay <clears throat> that's good yeah <laughs> amen amen and amen to that tim yep well guys i enjoy hanging with you guys it's fun yeah, it's it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to tell people about God forgives and he can cleanse a, a dirty conscience. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I like that symbol. That's good visuals. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, we'll do it again next next week. Oh here, I'll just turn off the uh recording here. And we'll just pray to end, eh? Yep. Yeah, there we go.